Okay everyone, this, in this video we'll be teaching you how to make lures like this one, they work really well. This one is specifically for tiger fish, but the, but the methods used in this video can be applied for any type of lure you want to make, for tilapia, bass, whatever. So I just want to make that clear. This is going to be a bit of a long video and we're going to go into a lot of detail on how to make it. Um, the next screen is going to be a screen to show you guys what materials you'll need. So just put pause and write it down if you're going to want to make this kind of lure. So step one, you're going to draw out the shape of whatever lure you want. You can trace around existing lures or you can um, download or take pictures from the internet and use them to draw out the shape or you can just draw out a shape from that you want. That part doesn't really matter. So that's, that's step one. The next step will be to cut this out with some scissors. Okay. Okay, so we've done that, we've cut it out. Next, we're going to want to paste this onto a piece of pine. It's just a small block of pine. We're going to paste this just on there, like that, with any glue that you have. So I've glued that on. That's the next step done. Okay, so our next step will be to cut this, this shape out of this block of wood. You can use a hacksaw or a wood saw, whatever. I've done many times, but I've got this old bandsaw here. Dangerous, look, the blade is exposed there. It's a very old thing, but it should do the job and it will just save time. So I'm gonna use that. Okay, so we, that's that step done. We've cut out the shape. I'm going to keep this on here because now what I want to do is make the profile from the top. So that's the next step. You can either sketch it in or you can just do it by eye. It's probably safer just to sketch it. But Okay, so I'm just sketching the top profile of the bait. Something generally like... It doesn't have to be exact because you're not. you don't want to cut exactly on these lines you want to leave a lot of space for error because the last thing you want to do is cut too much so this is just a rough a rough thing it's going to be much skinnier than this you can do the rest later destroying the main thing now back to the bandsaw Okay, okay, so this is the basic outline of what this bait is going to be. You can see that. So now the work with the bandsaw is done, now the knife begins. Okay, so the next step is you're going to need a sharp knife like this. Make sure you have a very sharp knife, but don't cut yourself. And now you just want to carve out the general shape of the lure. But there's no, I can't really teach you guys much, but you just want to follow your instincts and just, the lure's in there, you just have to carve it out and find it. So that's the next step. Just going to start by smoothing off all the sharp edges, just like this. That's how I normally start. And then you just follow your instincts from there.
Look at this little guy. Oh, you bit me. Don't bite me. Don't come near the knife, Corsi. Uh-uh. No. No. Uh-oh. This is not gonna work. Come sit here, Gurk. Okay, so you can see the lure is starting to take shape. Still got a lot of carving to do though. A lot of carving. Just stay there. Okay, so one point when you're carving, you always want to pay attention to symmetry. So you can see this side, you always look at it from the top and the bottom. So this side has been carved more than this side. So some wood needs to be removed here. And you just always look at it, both from top and bottom. And then you make your adjustments from that because you just want a very symmetrical lure. work camera show <laughs> Okay, I'm done with the main part which was carving so you can see I've got it down to like a slender profile got it into the general shape now I've got some rasps some files and some heavy grit some yeah some heavy grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna smooth everything down and do the final final shaping okay now pass the phone Please, what's your, what's your problem? Okay, so I've sanded it down um, to what I want with the, the heavy grit sandpaper. So now the next step is going to be to cut... No, oh, take it away. Next step is going to be to cut a slot in the bottom of the bait where we're going to fit the through wire that we're going to be able to put the hook hanger and the line tie on. So I'll do that next. Okay. So this is a very important step because you have to cut it very accurately just using a hacksaw blade just find the central point the most important thing is that it goes through the middle at the front and at the back and then what happens in the middle if you can do that that's really all that matters so you just want to make sure that it comes at the front okay take the parrots away So you cut that at the back slot and then the front slot you just make sure that it's perfectly central at the front otherwise your lure will not swim nicely. Perfectly central there. Yes and then you want to join up these two. So it starts skewing off sometimes you just have to correct that. See now they're lining up nicely. 
and you just cut that down. And depending on what gauge wire you're going to use for your hook hangers and line tie and your through wire, you can adjust the thickness of the slit. So if you're using thicker gauge wire, thicker slot obviously to be able to fit it in. And this bait is going to have three hooks, so it's not going to need that much weight. So it's not going to need much lead in the belly, if any at all. So this slot, you just want to make it um, basically to the half the depth of the whole lure. So you want a slot running approximately down here, halfway through, so that your wire can be in there nicely. Okay, so I've cut the slot for the line tie now. I want to cut the slot for the lip. And it's about 45 degrees is probably the best lip angle to make sure that it works. So I'm going to get that cut. I don't have a cameraman at the moment, so I'll show you guys once that's done. Just when you do it, make sure that when you're cutting across here, make sure that it doesn't chip and that it's straight. You don't want to squonk cut because then you, you you may as well just start again so make sure that that's straight that's very important okay so I've cut the lip slot and this is this material here is the acrylic that I'm going to be using for the lip as you can see it fits in quite snug there and now we can prepare the through wire okay so next we've got our wire um, if you have proper stainless steel wire, obviously it will be better, but come on, this is Africa, we can't find all that kind of thing easily, so we're just going to use this tying wire for the through wire. It'll work just fine, even though it will get a bit rusted. You just clean it off and put some oil on it, it'll be fine. So that's the next step. So we've got our piece of wire, we've got our bait. Now what we're going to do is make a through wire. So what you want to do first is just stick it and make sure it can fit. Okay, so I've got my piece of wire. I'm just going to slot it in here like that so that there's about that much sticking out. I've decided that this is only going to have two hooks on it. That's the best option. So just put some like that. Get your pliers. Focus. Okay, then you're going to grip it like that. Mark your position. You're going to bend it round, just like that, and clamp down this part so you make a nice hook hanger, just like that, and then you test, fit it into your bait, only this way is better, just like, like that, you want to make it quite nice and big. And then our next one, we want it right in the middle of the lure towards the back. So we're going to mark right there. So we want it to come up right there. Then we grip that with our pliers, just like that. And we're going to bend it. You can see, just make a right angle in that. So we've got it looking like that. We put it into our bait again. So we've got that in there, we've got this coming out here, and then you want this hook hanger to be quite big, so you just grip it in there, like that with your pliers, just like that, and then you're going to bend this around, take it off, bend it. And then bend this back in line with this one. So now you've got it looking like that. Okay, so back, the hook hangers are done. Um, you can see that. Now I've just got the line tie to do. So that's the type of wire, like construction that you need. Something like that. I'm just going to fit it in and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay. Okay, so this is the, what it looks like once the line tie and everything is in. 
so now you just want to put some super glue in that slot there and just to keep it there so next we've got to make our lip so this is the material I'm going to be using to make the lip it's some acrylic um, like some acrylic plate it's quite flexible it might break it's probably not the best thing to use but it's what I have I'm not sure if you guys can find any better lip material you guys should use that but I've got this so I'm going to use it okay so I've drawn the general shape of the lip um, then that's just a rough shape and then afterwards I'm probably going to file it down and make it really nice and symmetrical I'm going to see if the bandsaw can cut it and I'll get back to you guys okay so I've cut that out now I'm just got to smooth off the edges make it nice and symmetrical do the finishing touches and then we'll glue it in okay so I've smoothed off the edges a bit with a file so now it's looking a bit more respectable it's looking a bit more symmetrical and it fits in the lure quite nicely now I just need to clean up the edges with some sandpaper and then I can glue it in okay so I've done that I've smoothed off the edges and everything and I've fitted it in the lure now I just have to glue that in with some super glue super glue is the best glue for this kind of thing so I'm just going to glue that in and when you're gluing it in you must make sure that everything is perfectly straight you must make sure that it's straight this way you must make sure that it's straight like this way equal sides everything you must just make sure that it's really straight because once the glue is set there's no going back okay so now we've got this yeah, this is like uh, the, the slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some bicarbonate of soda and we're just going to sprinkle it. We're just going to sprinkle it all inside this gap and then we're going to put some super glue over that. Okay, so now we're going to put the baking soda inside here. So I've just got this weird like spatula thing from some epoxy. I'm going to use it to put it in here. So I'm just going to scoop up some of the baking soda and just put it in there. doesn't matter if it, some falls off. You just want to make sure that it gets down into every little part. Just tap it to smooth everything out. Make sure inside this part you get enough because Often it doesn't get in there. Just make sure you fill it up. Also, inside by the lip here, also add quite a lot in there. And tap it down so it gets in everywhere. See the spot still needs more underneath the hook hanger. Tap it down. Now it looks good. Right, so now we can. Try to remove all the super glue. I mean, not super glue. We can remove the baking soda around the edges. Just balance that like that. I've got some ultra thin super glue here. So, because it's so thin, it's just gonna get into all those little cracks. It doesn't matter if it goes on your wood, because you're gonna seal the wood anyway later. Just wanna squeeze it all in there. Get it under your hook hanger. Oh my God, don't glue it to the bottom. That's not good. Okay, I messed up there. So if it goes on the side, you just wanna. Maybe you shouldn't be doing it with your finger, but I don't really mind. See, I bumped it there. Be careful when using super glue, especially with this. It burns your eyes a bit. Good. Oh, in my eyes, in my eyes. Ow, ow. Okay. So you can see here that that's what we want. We're gonna cover this whole thing in super glue at the end. But now the baking soda is solidified inside here, yeah, it's rock hard. Now we're gonna focus on this area here, filling up the super glue, filling this area, and all of that. So we can take some of this excess that overspilled. Basically, you just want to put your super glue in anywhere where there's like gaps or cracks or anything. And now we're just going to focus on this top area over here. I'm going to fill that up with baking soda. 
step it down. It's nice in there. If you guys can see that. I'm just gonna chuck in that super glue in there. Okay, and then if it spools over, wipe it down, let it soak into the wood. It's what you want. Just make sure there isn't any gaps in the super glue at the front here. Now, you just want to wipe it off, clean your hands from the baking soda, wipe off all the baking soda on the main body of the lure. And now we're going to seal this lure with super glue. This thin super glue will soak into the wood nicely. So we just put one down the back and then just r rub it in nicely. Okay, now you'll be able to see where the super glue's been and where it hasn't been. So there isn't any here, you just want to go over that. Just color the, the whole thing in with super glue. Rub it around. If you don't want to use your finger, you don't have to. I don't know what else you'll use though, I'll just use my finger. I'll just peel the glue off afterwards. I don't think it's bad for you or anything. Maybe it is, I don't know. You just chuck that on there color it in everywhere with the super glue. No spot should escape. My eyes are burning from this glue. Jeez. You should probably wear goggles when you're doing this. The fumes are horrible. Just gonna rub this thing down with all that glue. And you can see it's shining from being covered in super glue now. You do not want to get super glue in your eyes. See this little spot here. I'll cover that with some more glue. That's exactly what we want there. And this super glue and baking so oh, my fingers are sticking together, you can see. Covered in glue now, but it's fine. It'll come off quickly. So now we're done with the super gluing. Now we're just gonna have to Smooth down this whole thing with sandpaper. Make it sure it's nice and smooth. I'll get back to you guys when that's done and you take a file and you clean up around here where all of this is. Make sure everything is nice and smooth and looking good. But we're looking quite good at the moment. Okay, so obviously the first step is going to be to paint this whole thing white. But before we do that, it's best to tape off this lip so that it doesn't get any paint so just put some masking tape on there so that's done now we're going to paint the whole thing white only requires a very little bit and you can spread it evenly across the whole bait This is just normal acrylic paint. So now we just let that dry and then we paint another layer of white on top of that. Okay guys, I just forgot one major important thing and that's the eye sockets. You need to drill eye sockets for when you stick in your eyes later on. 
So I'm just going to mark those out and drill them quickly. You just It's very important to make sure they're symmetrical. So get like a pen or something and mark out where you want the eye to be. Just like that. That's about right. And then look at it from the top. Look at this side and then look at this side. And then you're going to want to mark exactly the right position by judging it like that. Look at it from this, all different angles, just to make sure that you're happy with it. Yep, happy with that. I'm going to drill and I'll get back to you guys. You guys see that? That's what you want. This is such a nice glossy color. I think I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint it with this nice shiny white paint. Dry, let it dry, and then I'm going to paint orange stripes. So it sort of resembles like a baby tiger fish. So that's the plan for this bait. It's going to be an easy paint, paint scheme. Nothing too complicated. And hopefully it turns out really nicely for you guys. Okay guys, so I just want to make it clear that I'm not going to go into too much detail on this particular paint scheme and the footage isn't great anyway, but I just want to make it clear that you guys, it's up to really you guys what paint you want to do. Just do whatever you want to do, what works in your area. If it's similar to the kind of bait fish your predatory fish are eating, then just do that. That's the most important thing. And be creative. Try things that have never been done before and just experiment. Just make sure when you're painting with a paintbrush like that, that you get, it's sometimes hard to get the depth of color that you want. So you want to paint, let it dry and then paint over again with the same color, just to make sure that you get the depth of color that you're looking for. That's one very important point. Guys, to just go over the edges of your thing, you can use cokies or some kind of pen. It just helps to find the edges of your, of your stripes. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've done with the orange now. It doesn't look amazing, but it'll catch a fish. I'm sure you guys are better artists than me, so you guys will be able to do much better than that. But I'm just gonna add some Lumo yellow type color under here. Just for some more color. Okay, so I would say painting is pretty much done. It doesn't look amazing, but it'll catch a fish. That's what matters. There it is. And on we go with the eye. Super glued on. Isn't that looking? Juicy with that nice big eye. Now we just have to do the same.
just want to make sure that there's absolutely no gaps nothing like that get over the eyes so like by the hook hangers and stuff sometimes gaps like to form just want to try scoop up all of the epoxy you can you don't want to put a too thin layer you don't want to put a too thick layer you just want to keep it nice let's try see how much of this epoxy I can get quite a bit there just keep on going closing up any gaps making sure it doesn't pool anywhere with epoxy gaps are always trying to form so you need to be constantly watching for them make sure that epoxy gets in everywhere especially on the front here with the lip you don't want any gaps in there just be constantly watching for gaps because they are gonna want to form and if you see epoxy like coming on these hook hangers and stuff you can take it off put it somewhere else but that actually doesn't look too bad so far okay so we're just gonna leave it here to dry overnight and then we're gonna catch a fish on it tomorrow stay tuned okay everyone so it's the next morning and this bait is dried it's nice and solid everything so now we just want to do the just a bit of cleanup like see here some paint's gone in there we're going to file that off clean up the lip area and as well as clean out these hook hangers clean them out and put some ice trebles on there and then we'll test it out see if it works stay tuned okay everyone so next you're going to want to clean out the hook hangers so there's going to be some epoxy in here you want to get a small knife this knife is too big and clumsy but i'm just going to use it anyway it's better to use a smaller knife i just cut like this take off some of the epoxy do the same on the other side just take off that epoxy there and you can put the tip of the knife in and just do this and then cut it off on the other side and that's that's actually enough right just like that they'll be fine like that then do the same on this this one's obviously going to be a bit harder because of the angle Okay, so we're here with the homemade lure, just there. Hopefully it works. Pray for me, guys. Hopefully it works, because I think I might have made the angle of that thing. What the heck is that? Too shallow. I might have made... Well, let's see if it works. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it works. Oh yeah, can you guys see that action? Amazing, it works. We're gonna get a fish on this. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video. Keep your eyes open for it because it's gonna be a very interesting one. We're gonna be catching a tiger fish on the homemade lure as well as showing some underwater footage of its action. And then I just wanted to tell you guys about the channel that I actually learned to make lures from. It's called Marling Bait. I'll put the link in the description below. He makes some amazing videos, amazing lures, definitely worth checking him out. And again, check us out on Instagram. This is Africa Outdoors, link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you all stay safe. Hope you all have a great day.